Hey everyone, my name is Kate Abraham and I'm a resident at Cahaba Family Medicine Residency in Birmingham here today to talk to you about the topic of living where you're working or um, being intentional about um, making your home where your patients are staying and where the community is that you're serving through your career as a physician. I um, want to first and foremost say that I'm coming from a place of humility. I'm in training just like you guys and by no means have all this figured out. I um, just have had a few years of experience of trying to live among my patients under my belt and wanted to share um, what I've learned and just kind of encourage you guys to think more about yeah, just pushing your idea of medicine and especially family medicine beyond just a nine to five to um, really how you can um, advocate for your patients and fight for justice in their communities um, with your entire life and not just that um, work day. So um, things, places I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm in Birmingham, Alabama right now. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about that community. Also going to be sharing about um, a neighborhood in North Carolina. That's where I went to medical school at UNC and first kind of um, got this um, vision from others of really trying to live and serve in the same community. Um, and I'm also going to be talking about kind of a model clinic um, in Chicago, Illinois. Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny that we're at Rural Grand Rounds and that I'm talking about um, all urban locations, but that's just um, the experience that I've had. And I think all of these ideas of um, intentionally living um, in community with your patients in your community are applicable to the urban side and even more so to the rural side. So really looking forward to talking about this today with you guys. So first clinic that I wanted to talk about, it's called Longdale Christian Health Center and it's located in Chicago, Illinois. Um, opened in 1984, see so over 60,000 patients a year. They're a federally qualified health center. They have dental, they have vision, they have behavioral health, they have the medicine side with internal med, family med, peds. Um, they have a fitness center, they have a cafe, um, really just everything you could dream of offering to the patients that you're seeing right now in your continu continuity clinic um, is happening at this clinic. And um, I think something really special about the clinic, like beyond offers it, offering all of those services, is that the majority of the providers live around um, the clinic and in this um, side of Chicago that's a lot rougher than some of the nicer areas of Chicago. You know, the schools aren't as good. Um, access to entertainment, to um, like choice housing um, is not as great, but um, the staff choose to live and to serve in the community, not only as physicians, but also as friends and as neighbors, um, which I think is really meaningful. And I think um, is something that um, more family medicine doctors should think about doing. So yeah, first um, kind of learned about this idea of living intentionally where your community is. So like for the urban side, um, not serving in a clinic on a rough side of town and then living on the nice side or for rural, not working in a rural clinic, but um, coming and going um, and living in the city. Um, so yeah, from this, um, he's an economist, an author, um, a political activist, um, and his name is John Perkins. Um, so he has three um, main um, things that he encourages. Um, and so his goal kind of is to just see um, justice in communities. Um, both um, health-wise, also with um, yeah, spiritual health, with emotional health. Um, so he has kind of these three principles for what should we do if we really want to see um, justice in our patients' lives, um, um, access to quality care, um, and full access to health care. So the first is this idea of uh, relocation. Um, so there's this Chinese proverb um, that he um, shares to kind of like get across the idea. Um, so it says, go to the people, live among them, learn from them, love them, start with what they know, build on what they have. But the best of leaders, when their task is done, the people will remark, we have done it ourselves. Um, so just this idea of instead of attempting to alleviate problems from the outside as outsiders, um, really moving into the community. And that's where we'll see the best solutions when um, we are part of that community. Um, so yeah, he also talks about how living in the community where your patients are coming from, it changes this idea of um, them. You know, we talk about our patients as um, those people, their schools, um, their lives, um, and it changes um, into the we, us, and our. So no longer um, is that grocery store down the street from your clinic um, just where your patients are shopping, but it's also where you're shopping. Um, no longer is the school that has a really poor ranking in the neighborhood just um, where the kids go when you're in a well child check, but those are where your kids are going to. And um, yeah, just thinking about how poverty is really influenced by geography and um, how can we change that and influence that by where we live. So next step after relocation um, is redistribution. Um, so redistribution, um, just talking about the same thing kind of with the geography that um, resources usually in different communities. And um, you see this in rural communities um, all the time that maybe 
um, the resources aren't allocated in that community and it's in an urban center um, and people in that community are left needing or lacking. But if um, people from the highly resourced community were to move into the area um, with lower resources, that kind of um, starts to equil um, equilibrate. And so the end goal of all this is reconciliation, spiritual and um, physical and mental, mental um, reconciliation, breaking down racial barriers, ethnic barriers and economic barriers to really um, show people love as their doctor, as their neighbor um, and as their physician. Um, and yeah, just um, I'm a Christian and I think my faith um, really plays into how I care for my patients. And I'm sure um, a lot of you too, whether it's Christian faith or another faith um, that might play into, you know, just kind of your worldview, how that affects um, how it's your patient care. Um, so for me, this um, verse has been really influential for me in thinking about where I choose to live as a doctor. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these, Mark 12, 30 to 31. So just thinking about what my priorities are as a physician. And for me personally, that's to love God and to love my neighbor. Um, and wanting to not just use my career to do that, but um, really every aspect of my life. So this is a little bit of what John Perkins talks about. So yeah, in medical school, um, I was at UNC Chapel Hill, um, but lived down the street at, um, in Durham. Um, and as a med student started working at a free clinic, you know, had a, like pretty much all of us probably did, had a desire to um, serve the poor through medicine and wanted to kind of figure out what that would look like. Um, so it was a clinic that partnered with World Relief, which is a refugee resettlement agency. Um, and yeah, we had a clinic in a, just like an apartment complex down the road from where I went to school. Um, and World Relief placed a lot of refugees in that neighborhood. And there was also a really high um, population of undocumented um, Hispanic families that also lived there. Um, and started to have this desire that I wanted to be more than just like a medical student than a volunteer to these people, but really wanted to enter their lives as a friend and um, a neighbor and a sister and a fellow mother and um, other things like that. So um, chose to um, move into the community during my um, second year of medical school. So here's a picture of um, some of my neighbors and I, it was Halloween and um, we have a lot of like ghoulish themed costumes and I dressed up as a tooth to try to promote, promote oral health care. I'm not sure how effective that was, but um, yeah, just an example of um, yeah, life on life. You know, you, we all celebrate different holidays and this was an example of how outside of the office I could kind of encourage healthy habits and um, get to know my patients. And um, yeah, so a lot of it was challenging, I think. So this is kind of like a extreme example because these apartments really, really weren't very nice and this doesn't have to yeah this isn't what every situation of living among your patients has to look like but yeah had bed bugs had lice water outages are we ended up when we moved it was because our apartment caught on fire from this really old exhaust fan um yeah a lot of things that um really felt like yeah it was overwhelming i think even more so than just those physical things that were happening in my life when living in this neighborhood um, it was yeah, just seeing my patients' lives more clearly, you know, we hear these like, yeah, in caring for uninsured patients or patients that have Medicaid, um, we hear a lot of really hard stories in the clinic that are hard to handle, but when it becomes a neighbor and when you can't like pull into your garage and go home and, and get away from that, it can be really challenging. But um, there's also a lot of beauty in um, the struggle and in those hard times. So um taught me a lot more. So I also got my MPH when I was at UNC. So I spent a lot of time studying like socioeconomic determinants of health. But I mean, this was the clearest depiction really living in the community, um, understanding what the barriers were, whether it was transportation or um, language barrier. I remember going with one of a Somali neighbor to an appointment she had and you know, had some they thought the little girl might have to have her adenoids removed because she was like really stuffy and they asked her to use saline spray and they told the in-person Somali interpreter like they need to go get like um, a nasal saline spray and after the doctor left the room asked the interpreter if he knew what saline spray was and he said what and he didn't you know he didn't even know what then this was not saying every interpreter is like this but he didn't like understand what the doctor was saying and so the message in no way was trans um, um, translated to the family and so yeah, just kind of seeing that stuff firsthand, not just from the doctor role, but also just from a friend um, and a neighbor was really good. So yeah, seeing clear those determinants of health, that was a blessing. Um, building trust with the community, because I wasn't um, just the doctor that came in in my nice clothes and my white coat, but 
Um, they saw my life outside of that. They saw the messiness that is in all of our lives that may be easily contained when we only see a patient in an office visit. But I think it kind of helped me, um, them to see me as more human and not just kind of this far away doctor. Um, other things really broaden my, um, the, yeah, just my diversity of friendships. All of my friends looked like me. That was the community that I spent time with. But for the first time in my life, I had really close friends who um, were on food stamps, who um, had WIC, who were on Medicaid, who didn't have insurance. And that was a really, um, yeah, a really cool thing. And also kind of like I said before, just getting to model those healthy behaviors. So um, this picture, um, I ran a lot um, in medical school and a lot of the young girls in the neighborhood would see me running and want to join. So we started like a little running club. And so this was just at the um, playground in the neighborhood. And a lot of these girls, like girls on the run was offered at their school, but didn't have transportation home after that. Um, so got to build a relationship with them through this running team and would run five Ks and was just a cool example for a healthy habit in my life to be um, modeled by others just through living in um, the community. So yeah, and again, back to that friendship. Those, so this is my husband and I, he's an, also an intern at our program at our wedding um, a few years ago. And we had like a quite the array of flower girls and ring bears and they were all children from the community um, that we were living in whose um, families we'd been able to build really um, close relationships with. So it was cool. This was the first time, especially in med school, it's hard to see um, that overlap where you really get to know patients and their families outside of the clinic. And this was the first time um, that it had happened and it was really beautiful and gave me a lot of joy of purpose um, in medicine. And also I think um, helped me to better understand how to um, care for these families um, in the clinic. So now we're in Birmingham, Alabama in family medicine residency and um, it's been a joy and so grateful for um, where we are. This is our clinic. We are in West End, um, Birmingham. Um, it's a neighborhood in Birmingham. That's where our clinic is and that's where a lot of our residents and faculty live too. So it's an underserved area of Birmingham. We have a little map up here. So um, on the west side of town, the left side of the map, um, we have our clinic. And we have the hospital um, where we deliver babies. And this like west side of the neighborhood is primarily African-American. Um, like the school across from the clinic is the third worst in um, the state of Alabama. And you could drive 10 minutes away to another neighborhood and you'd see like the number three top school. Um, and yeah, you really see just a big div um, divide, like food desert, like, yeah, just a completely different population. Um, separated in the city, just like you'd see in a rural situation, like maybe you could drive 45 minutes out of town and see a completely different community um, from what you would see downtown. So yeah, um, most of their residents and faculty live in the neighborhood around the patients. And um, again, it's just been so cool to really understand. Um, yeah, like I, yeah, understand the community and the resources available to my patients. And yeah, things moving from the they to the we. Um, so wanting um, the schooling to get better because my children are going to go there, um, wanting more food options to get better in the community because that's where I shop too. And yeah, just has been a really sweet thing. And again, um, evolving into yeah, just friendships and relationships outside of clinic. So this is um, one of um, the patients that I see um, do her, you know, well child checks and her sick visits and she lives two blocks down the street from us. We live probably about four blocks from the clinic. Um, stays with her grandparents. Her, she, her mom passed away when she was two. She died of a heroin overdose in front of her. And this is just one of the many stories, um, just like you guys here too, in the clinic of, yeah, really challenging social situations. And um, it's been such a blessing and I think gift to the community to be able to walk alongside my patients, both inside the clinic and outside of the clinic as a friend um, and a neighbor and not just as your doctor. And yeah, I think just, yeah, just brings more health to, health to them. And I think makes what I'm doing a lot more rewarding. And um, yeah, it's been a really, really good, um, good thing for, for me. So yeah, just wanted to encourage you guys today to um, think more about um, what this could look like with, um, yeah, just thinking ahead to where you want to work. And um, I'm assuming like somehow tied to the underserved um, and how um, you could use the time outside of just your nine to five um, to love and care for the community. Because I think that is what we're called to, right? Being a physician is a privilege. And um, I don't think our goal should just be getting through the workday and getting our paycheck and heading home to our family and our community. But I think um, really investing in um, your patient population um, is how we're really gonna see um, 
people's health change and um, justice come to communities. So just a few take home points. The first is kind of what I was just talking about to try to develop a vision. Um, and yeah, for me, it was asking the Lord where he saw me. Um, for you, it might be asking God or asking your friends or your family um, where they see you. And um, yeah, just trying to think ahead to how um, you could more holistically serve um, your community. The sex second one to be um, build community. So all of this would be really challenging to do alone. Um, if you were in a rural community by yourself without community, um, if you're in an underserved urban community, um, yeah, finding community to do this with, um, whether they're medical or just other people who are really intentional about seeing the community grow and thrive both mentally, physically, and spiritually, um, finding that community. Um, and then, yeah, relocating, um, moving maybe from a more comfortable place to a place where you really feel like you can rev re leverage more areas of your life than just your um, work environment for your patients. And yeah, I think we just have such a privilege of being family medicine doctors and getting to um, really care for not only people's medical problems, but their social situations. So I think um, in our field, this is just a really unique way that we could um, further serve um, our communities. Um, so, yeah, I'm really thankful for being able to share all this with you guys today. And um, yeah, by no means is it is family medicine and how you serve your community black and white, but um, living in the community and alongside your patients, not just as their doctor, but also as their neighbor, um, has been something that's been really life-giving for me and I think also my community and just wanted to um, take some time today to encourage you all to think about that and um, consider um, pursuing that in your future. Um, so yeah, just a few um, helpful links that I um, have learned from and grown from. The first is the Christian Community Development Association. Um, that was um, started by John Perkins, so less medical, more just um, um, concern for communities. Um, the next is the Christian Community Health Fellowship, and so this is just medical. It's different clinics throughout the U.S. who are intentional about um, um, their employees living in the community that they're serving and not just coming into work. Um, there's a website where you could learn more about John Perkins and um, the things that he's doing, um, some more information about Lawndale Health Center in Chicago, um, and then something that I've been reading more about recently, there's a similar clinic in Atlanta who have, um, they've just published a book, it's called Let's Make Healthy Neighborhoods, and just talk some about um, how to really care for a neighborhood um, in your clinic visit and yeah, as a provider living in the community. So thank you so much for your time today and I'm looking forward to um, discussing the things that um, I've shared about.